Hello and welcome. It is my pleasure today to welcome to the Boston area, Sri Arun Kankaniji, who is the president of Seva International USA, a Hindu faith-based charity that was started in 2004 in the US. Seva is a worldwide movement to help humanity in distress and serve local communities with activities in, the, in 20 plus countries. Currently, Arunji works as Directory of Inventory Management in Star Pipe Products, which is a Houston-based manufacturer and distributor of pipe fittings in waterworks sector. Originally from Rajasthan in Bharat, uh, he was born and brought up in Mumbai and presently lives in Houston with his wife, Meena, who is a yoga therapist and their two children. Welcome to Lokwani Arunji. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you. What a pleasure it is to have you here. Um, I think uh, Seva is a very unique organization that very quickly, you really, in a very short period of time, have made tremendous impact uh, all over, wherever you have a, had a presence, particularly in the US. So could you tell us a little bit about what motivated uh, the founding team uh, to start Seva and what is the mission and vision that you have for Seva? Uh, thank you, Pranjaniji. As you rightly said, we are really fortunate to have very good team, very good people. And that has really helped to create the impact that Seva has been able to create in our local community here. And uh, if you uh, see, basically what motivates us is this uh, universal principle, which is Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha, Sarve Santu Niramaya. That in fact is our vision also, that really is striving to become an organization, a world-class organization, which is trying to achieve this goal of Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha, that is let all be happy, let all be without any difficulty or disease. So this particular vision, which is our, in a way, uh, philosophically, that is the goal of a, a message coming from Dharma, coming from Bharat, that is the vision of uh, uh, Seva also. And uh, really we strive to, through the selfless service, through the compassionate service, try to be that organization, which really can bring, can achieve this particular vision in the world. Beautiful, Arunji. Um, and why is it that you chose to call yourself a faith-based organization in these days where people are always saying seva and uh, dharma, you know, should be, or not dharma, religion should be kept separate, especially the word Hindu <laughs> is often kept out of service. Uh, why did you choose to actually, you know, bear that in your name itself? Yeah, that's a very good question because that uh, typically uh, people coming from Bharat, coming from India, they have this uh, concern or question more generally. Uh, it's very interesting. Uh, I'll present it in two ways, in two aspects to it. Uh, number one, what we really mean when we say Hindu faith-based. So what we really mean when we say Hindu faith-based is that we derive our principles, our uh, energy, our values from the Hindu philosophy. The great uh, ideas which are presented in our Hindu philosophy like Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha. Very few cultures, uh, I'm sure that there are other cultures, it's not only uniqueness of Hindu culture, but in the world where people are I versus you, in that word, saying that Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha, that let all be happy without any discrimination, I'm not even saying that only humanity or human being need to be happy. All be happy, all living being, not living and non-living being, there has to be complete harmony there. This ideal comes from our philosophy. Similarly, the ideas of Vasudhaiva Kutumbakam. Very simple thing, the whole world is one family. Uh, if you have this as a starting point, then obviously harmony or peace becomes possible. If you are starting with any other perspective that it then it will generate this you and me dichotomy the ideas like nar seva narayan seva that uh, serving humanity is really serving divinity 
it is the same thing the even for the self realization the goal of the personal life also in this philosophy it is said atmano mokshartham jagat hitai cha the best way for the moksha for the self realization is serve the world so this service is a vehicle is a tool is a great vehicle in bhagavad uh, bhagavad gita it is said that it is the means of karma yoga so these lofty ideals are the one which really drives us it gives us the reason it gives us the basis it gives us the fundamentals it gives us the principles based on which we really have uh, created this organization and it is inspiring each and every volunteer so that is why that is one aspect that why we say we are hindu faith based because we really believe in these lofty ideals the second aspect which perhaps in us it is very very relevant and uh, people in usa can understand and know this intrinsically in usa faith based organization has much better respect people trust people in the community as well as in the government they if i can say so they have a higher trust on the faith based organization because faith based organization has a unique distinction that they are um, having those values which drives them and there has been a track record there is has been a history in right. europe and in america right. that this faith based organization has been the means to serve the local community right. so that perspective also being a faith based organization uh, i if i may say so it's a privilege that we are kind of uh, that trustworthy that value based organization which yeah. is serving all without any discrimination beautiful value based i think that is the whole point that you said and i think i like the point that without the values you cannot build the mission or vision of the organization and to see what that is i think that is very good actually in our local town or in many of the local town the food pantries are all run by the faith based organizations you know that is a very common theme that you said and thank you for highlighting that because and i think traditionally if we look back at our own hindu society or indian society when we go back to india you know people often say that people used to give to the temples rather than you know give charity but that's because the temples were running they were the faith based organizations bringing free food education and all of that uh, to the world at large so i think that makes a lot of sense you know what why that uh, was doing what it was doing um so the other question now i have is that you know i mean i don't think you've been there that long but the impact that you have had is really tremendous so could you tell us a little bit about uh, the highlights of your accomplishment uh, in the us uh, definitely and anything else that you would like to highlight i uh, truly we are blessed uh, in uh, uh, the sense that we have fortunate we have been fortunate to have very good team of people our people has been the biggest resource and i wouldn't say our people i think that because of this uh, lofty vision because of this ideal people like minded people with that kind of devotion with that kind of uh, vision have come together and that has really created the impact that uh, i think we are all proud of we are all really it really satis very satisfying to see uh, there are many things uh, which uh, seva has been able to do but if i can highlight three things uh, from my personal perspective i feel it's uh, very very important and unique also in some way uh, first is that seva today has become in a way a major <coughs> hindu faith based disaster relief organization in usa uh, although we had uh, participated in the relief effort for uh, multiple disasters in us also across the world we had always been doing since our kind of uh, starting the organization but 2018 this uh, uh, harvey really was a turning point where the houston community and seva team the whole community really came together and seva became just the platform for people to realize their or manifest their kindness within them and uh, people 
served really wholeheartedly and uh, we were able to make a significant difference. In fact, through SEVA, more than $5 million worth of services we were able to offer. We, were, we got the grant from uh, Red Cross, we got the grant from uh, uh, city foundations. We worked with pretty much all the organization, uh, Indian, Hindu, as well as other local community-based organizations. We worked together and uh, we created not only the rescue, relief, but rehabilitation also. In fact, our work is still going on. So this is one thing I would say, which has continued during COVID. It has expanded across the country. And during the fires in the California, our California chapter really did extraordinary work engaging the community in that. So SEVA has now become kind of a, uh, you can say main organization where we can the Hindu community, the Indo-American community also can say that we are able to make a difference in our local community during the disaster relief. The second, I think, is uh, one thing which, which in fact was a gap, and it is still is a major gap, which is very difficult to recognize because a lot of Indian community is relatively uh, in a better state. So they think that we don't need help, but there are many situations where families need help, where their own resources of friends, families is not enough to take care, whether it is uh, during the COVID or in otherwise peacetime also. So family services program is another program, which I think is a major achievement, which we have been able to really establish. Uh, since 2011, we have been working on it, and now we have a very nice structure where we focus on three aspects. One is the family case management, extreme situation to address it, educational workshop and awareness uh, uh, sessions to avoid the, to prevent the problems. And third is we focus on the health, the proactive health program, which is SDM, Stop Diabetes Movement through the yoga therapy, as well as now we have launched recently the KYSH, which is Know Your Healthy Self, KYHS. Uh, that is a new uh, initiative which we have launched uh, during COVID now, just uh, a couple of days ago during Vijaya Dashini. So these are the, I think, uh, three dimensions of uh, family services which are making a difference in the severe or uh, difficult situation in the family life. The third major impact which I can see, I can really feel, uh, I really feel very good about is the we are able to provide opportunity to youth, our youth, our children, our teenagers, high schoolers, college students, young adults, to serve the local community. So this is a very unique uh, uh, aspect, which I think Seva has uh, filled this uh, uh, aspect or uh, this gap by providing the youth internship. We have the internship for high schoolers called LEAD program. We have the internship for the college students called Get Inspired program to serve locally. Get Inspired is a very intense program. We have two months of intense service, almost 25 hours per week for eight weeks. People serve youth and they literally work for more than 40, 50 hours when they are actually engaged. And they have been yes, uh, serving our uh, um, refugee community or the local underserved community in education and all those aspects. So, and also we have the international internship program called IFS, you are for SEVA. So this uh, providing opportunity to our youth to serve local community as well as internationally where they sometimes may want to do has been, I think, the third major uh, I can say, if I can say so, as the accomplishment of SEVA, amongst many other things like Aspire program, where we run the education program for the underserved communities, Bhutanis refugees program that we had been able to serve the refugee community. So there are many such event uh, programs, but I think these three, the disaster relief, the family services case management, and uh, the youth engagement program, has been, I think, something meeting the need, uh, which where there was a gap and there was no other such structured 
for going on, which I think we are able to make a difference. That's great. I, I completely agree with you. Having lived here for a long time now, I think people are really uh, striving to find the platform. I think in general, most uh, Indian origin people are very caring, very compassionate. And when a disaster happens, uh, you know, they want to help out, but they don't know how. When you look around, you know, there are communities that are underserved. And again, you need a platform. It's not easy for an individual to contribute their talent. So to have a platform that can identify their talent and give back, that's great. I'm particularly excited to hear about your uh, youth uh, program because I think there's a you know dramatic uh, interest in that kind of thing. So do you go to both sides where you collect mentors who want to work with youth and then also have a structure for the youth to give back? Can you briefly outline how that works? Absolutely, you, you got it right. So really this program is a win-win from multiple perspectives. First, that the youth, this sanskar of seva, this virtue or this value of service, giving without any return expectation. This virtue, see the in our culture, we say sanskar happens by doing, not by just talking or reading. Yeah. It is something to practice. Love is something to be experienced, to be practiced. So this experience or joy of giving, experience this joy of giving, uh, we have been able to really do. So this is from the young perspective, because this is very intense, see, dealing with the, when you are providing this type of platform or program, automatically you need a lot of mentors. You need a lot of experienced people as well as community oriented kind hearted people who are passionate about youth and the work that they want really youth to grow and nurture this positive uh, vibrations that is there in them this try positive thing to do good in the community that is there in them so these people we are able to engage and such adults are professionals who are in their own uh, life already completely engaged, but they get connected and they are able they are able to find a platform to give back to the community through by mentoring these youths, by guiding these youths. And the third is the beneficiary because of these they spend a lot of time. Uh, for example, the when the teenagers uh, lead program is there, they are able to go to the food pantries or uh, go to the local park and the road and cleaning those things all these things so community gets help so people who need the help for example this uh, aspire program i mentioned we have the uh, after school program but during the summer when we have this internship we have a lot of activity for the children sure. these underserved community children we take them to the park we take them to the museums we take them to the picnic or ar arrange the competitions or the soccer game for them this type of thing this experience, when they get, it is very nurturing for that community for the, because education is very important, but education in a familial atmosphere, right. this internship is able to bring this connection. And that is why these uh, interns who had uh, connected one time, they had come again also. They had come as one, two, three times as again internship participant, as well as afterwards they have come become the mentors for the program. Wonderful. So this is a kind of a, a mutually beneficial win-win situation. And as you said, for the students, for the community mentors, as well as for the beneficiary, all these three dimensions get greatly benefited. That's fantastic, fantastic. To see a structured approach to that, I think that is really, really uh, tremendous to see. And uh, really, to, it's wonderful to see the excitement of the youth who want to volunteer. I think the next generation is a step ahead of us in terms of compassion and care. And I think uh, that's, I totally that's, agree. A, that, that's a great thing to see. Um, of course, we are in very special times right now, Arunji. And uh, so I know that Seva has done tremendous work um, to <clears> help <throat> with COVID. Um, two questions. One is, of course, what direct services have you been providing? And the second is that many of your programs, you know, whether it is family services, whether it is volunteering, how are you managing in this very virtual times? You know, has it been a challenge or and are you continuing to provide those services? So uh, second question first, uh, uh, see, uh, uh, challenges bring opportunity. Uh, as I mentioned, I think already two times that 
our biggest asset, biggest uh, blessing has been that we have a fantastic group of workers, karikartas, the team. And uh, these are self-motivated. Uh, these are all volunteers and self-motivated volunteers. Even on, also we do have full-time staff uh, because to sustain certain programs on the continuous basis we do have. We call them mission-oriented staff. And the reason is because they are not working like a nine to five job type of thing. They are really taken this as a mission. And yes, right now uh, to sustain also, they need some financial support. So they are taking it. But this uh, mission is the one which is driving them. So we are really blessed. And that is why the managing is not a problem because the whole thing is self-managed. In fact, the, it's a self-organized, if I can use the word, it's a self-organized system mm -hmm. and we just come together and uh, different times, different people take initiatives and the thing starts. Uh, it is not that it is the program comes from the top and then only it is executed. No, but I was Nothing. asking about like, you know, to provide family services, right? Like if there's a challenge, yes. how do you do it when you cannot go, right? And it's great to hear that the management is beautiful, but yes. I'm curious about that. Service part definitely is difficult because there are two aspects. One is that uh, because of the social distancing, uh, going out itself is a challenge and there are restrictions. At the initial stage when the kind of uncertainty and all the confusion was much higher, it was much difficult earlier right. and still it continues. So that part is there, but fortunately by using the tools and technology by the phone and other, we were able to communicate and provide the help wherever remotely we could do. And second is, we have been very fortunate, as I mentioned, that working with the community has been one of the great aspects of the right. SEVA style of working. Right, so right. we have great community partner organizations. These, with help of the community partner organizations and volunteers, people have gone out of their way. Perfect. For example, I can give one simple example of uh, we have in uh, Houston, Madam Dutraji, who is our, uh, who takes care of our family services program. He uh, retired from MD Anderson as a research uh, scientist, senior research scientist. And he, now more than 70 years old, but he has done so much even during the COVID. In the initial times when there was uh, one Indian family, the husband, uh, was uh, in the hospital uh, on the ventilator for many weeks. Uh, at that time, the wife and the two uh, children at home. So he not only consoled, talked to them on the phone, continuously supported them, but went to their home and delivered the groceries and those needs if there was any need. So he was talking to them and going out of his way while obviously taking all the precautions and all the care knowing that that family is infected with the COVID, Beautiful. it go. And that is, that we have seen uh, in other places also, because many places, international students especially, yeah. where they were affected, they were living in the apartments or uh, with the friends or no friends. Now, when they were affected, they were not able to get the local help easily in mm -hmm. some cases. Mm -hmm. So they connected with our helpline and through the local our karikarta or community organizations partnerships we were able to find people who were able to go and deliver the medicines and groceries to those students also so definitely because of the whole uh, atmosphere and uh, challenges yeah serving had been a challenge for example earlier you used to have monthly serve events we are not able to do those right. but wherever the need is the our uh, karyakartas and volunteers and the community members have gone out of their way to serve the need where the need is really the most. Beautiful. And other services that you have provided during COVID, I mean, I think that was not just limited to family services. You've done tremendous amount of other work as well. So I would love to hear about that as well. In fact, it's a story in itself. Uh, because as this whole thing started, we were also kind of uh, all taken by surprise that what to do, because you can't get out of the home, then how do you serve? And uh, from that, the discussion 
uh, one of the karyakarta gave the idea okay let us start the helpline because we don't know what people need mm. so let us hear what people need and then let us figure out how to address it so we started the helpline in the very first two three days like that we once this, this thing started the growing so we started that that idea of listening to the need and then based on the intensity based on the magnitude creating the programs and structures has gone so beautifully when uh, two months ago i was looking back and trying to put together a list of what all different initiatives started it was more than 25 initiatives that were started during this covid by different karyakarta based completely based on the need based on whatever the need is there how can we meet it how can we address that what can we do what what difference we can make at this point of time just to give the example uh, this helpline became a very kind of a, a center point for specially stranded passenger and students because people from india are those who are who were here on the temporary visas especially not only the university schools and uh, educational institutions but uh, uh, fields like hotels and uh, those sort of places for the uh, training and work they were also stranded and they were out of the job immediately so such people students because they couldn't go back they had no money to stay here trying to help them with the help of the local community that uh, became a very that became an initiative in itself then there was another interesting thing the parents who came from india here right. and they were supposed to go back so those who had some difficulties had prescription drugs for let us say one week or one month or two months now had exhausted so what how to get what is the corresponding prescription drug here so they were in trouble they were not knowing where to exactly go for or take help so there also the new initiative started the mask obviously was the very first need right. so we started we we really get got into this purchasing business we dealt with so many vendors and trying to figure out because getting the mask was the biggest challenge at the initial one month right uh, everywhere it was exhausted so trying to get we were able to get a uh, uh, mask the ppes we were able to get we were able to distribute across the country where the need is there and uh, we became the source uh, of the ppe distribution because we were able to source we and we source from so many multiple sources to be able to provide that then food distribution the meals distribution in fact one of the things uh, here in houston and uh, atlanta and other places it started because people were really Uh, had a tremendous amount of gratitude towards these first responders the medical yeah. uh, staff and the uh, uh, police and the fire and all these uh, first responders because they were putting their life on uh, line and in fact news also were coming many of uh, you know, first respond- sure. responders sure medical yeah. doctors and the nurses they also uh, became right. victim of this thing so out of the gratitude people wanted to do something sh- wanted to show the gratitude so right. here they started okay why not at least uh give them uh, meals yeah. homemade meals or provide them some uh, because they are working in the hospitals uh yeah. extended hours or on the uh, road police is uh, doing this duty or covid the testing center where the staff is there working right. uh, tirelessly so why not do that and that is the new initiative started that let us at least provide the hot meals to our first responders uh handmade mask that became such a huge program right because the masks were in short supply that was one and it was more and more need was coming in all the across the country so a few people got together they created the design you know, from the web and all those places found what is a simple way figured out how to procure all the material and this became a fantastic and kind of a healing and a, a therapeutic uh, work for uh, many people because those who were doing right the whole family got engaged and it became a very very fulfilling and kind of satisfying work that they were making a difference in this tough time sure. so this handmade mask was a such an interesting thing i think around 22nd or 23rd march if i remember correctly when uh, if you remember uh, prime minister modi ji in india yeah, he yeah. was uh, first time uh, addressing the nation over there he mentioned that sanyam and uh, uh, sahakar this two words he said that we need to be having self restraint yeah. by 
putting the mask and uh, not going out and those sort of things. And really, this uh, we are going to defeat this, have the confidence. Right. This uh, uh, Vishwas has to be there. So from that, when I heard that, suddenly it clicked to me that really that is very true. It is so simple idea, but it is the antidote to the fear. Absolutely. So then we launched a program uh, called Seva Sankalp. Yeah. And uh, this idea was that we said, okay, let us reach out to all the community organizations. We don't know what to do and how to do it. But at least, can we have this positive mindset that Sanyam, Sahakar, and Sahiyo, these three mantra, that we will encourage our community, all members in the community, to have the self restraint. Yeah. We will encourage organizations that we will be cooperating and serving as much as possible in our local community, finding out where the need is, reach out instead of waiting for people to come out, yeah. reach out. And then in the community, there are other organizations which are also working, reach right. out to other organization and see if we can really collaborate. Yeah. So this simple idea, we were able to reach more than 500 organizations and this during wow. COVID, we were able to collectively work with uh, these organizations across the country. In the... Uh, so this way, I mean, as I said, that when I listed, it was more than 25 initiatives. Five activities, yes, yes. So really great impact. I mean, it, it's millions that you're impacting and not just in one country or two, but over 20 countries. So that is uh, something really terrific, I think. Um, and what I'm hearing is that you really listen to people, understand the needs, and then make the services instead of saying these are the services we have to provide. And I think that's probably key to your success because you're giving, you're, you know, giving what is needed rather than just, you know, bringing a hammer and, you know, just bringing nails to hammers, you know, that that's not the approach that you're taking. Um, so now moving forward, you know, what does Seva hold and how can people in the community who are listening to you now want to give back? How do they get involved? If I can say two things, uh, one is uh, join the hands. See, service is uh, something which really we say serving humanity is serving divinity in our culture, in our value system. As uh, in Sanskrit, it is says, Atmano Mokshartham Jagatahitaicha. That is for the self realization for the ultimate uh, moksha, the ultimate uh, goal, the best way is to serve. So first request is, whatever you are, don't think that, uh, okay, what I can do alone, or I have only limited time, or I don't have um, more resources. If you have the desire, join us. We'll be able to really, uh, there are so many positive things going on. And uh, uh, see, like the diseases are contagious, Enthusiasm and positiveness is also contagious. Absolutely. We have such lively and positive people. I'm sure that working together with them, people will be inspired to really do more and really figure out or find the innate capabilities and strengths that they have that we can make a difference. So this is one request that join us in whatever capacity, whatever time and whatever resources you have, uh, we can work together. The second, which also you indicated in your, uh, while you're saying earlier, that Seva during the Harvey became the platform for people to work. This is really our model. This I, we have seen time and again in the peace time or the disaster time, whether it is in USA or across the world, uh, wherever Seva is serving. We, as uh, we said that now we are in more than 20 countries. So, this particular aspect that if there is goodness in the heart and you want to do something, make a difference in the community in a positive way, we are equipped and we are kind of uh, having that positive mindset that we can make that happen. We can together, we can serve, together we serve better is our tagline also. So this uh, uh, aspect that uh, we can do it together and it is not, doesn't have to be very huge thing. I, I just give you, I was mentioning to you that one of the initiatives is uh, Know Your Healthy Self, which we just launched uh, a couple of days ago in Vijay Dashmi Day. So the idea is what? Very simple. Idea is community-based, 
forming small groups in our vicinity where we can impact each other, where we can nudge each other, where we can support each other in developing the positive outlook to the health, not just a one uh, single dimensional only exercise or only diet. No, a positive holistic approach uh, based on our Panchakosh theory in the uh, yoga philosophy. So this program where we say know your healthy self, S-E-L-F, which is sleep, exercise, living in present, and food. So sevausa.org slash self is the web page for this program. So this is a simple program in which everybody can participate. You make a difference for your own health and you can bring, you can make your family healthy and the community healthy by simply being the messenger, being that person who is supporting this positive idea and just staying at it. So this way, there are very good, simple programs. Get Connected is another program which really happened during this uh, COVID. Very simple. Eight, 10 seniors who really felt that, okay, I can't do much or how can I do or what can I do? I can't go out because seniors were more susceptible to this uh, uh, infection. So this program, we gave them the list of 100, 200, 1,000, 2,000 people. That, okay, you call them and just talk to them that everything is fine. If they have any need, then we can address that. But at least talk to them, everything is going okay because that itself is a great uh, right. kind of, uh, people are not uh, uh, hearing the voice. I tell you one story. In fact, we got a call from, I think, Singapore or India that the call, the mother was, or mother or father, they, yeah. What they were saying is that my son has not gone out of the apartment for the last one month. This is the initial days of the COVID. Has not seen a human being in the last right. thing because he has not gone out of the apartment. Can somebody reach out and uh, at least uh, talk to him? So that also is an important thing. So simple, as simple as talking is also a very uh, useful and productive thing it can be. So this is the request that Siva is a platform which can really help you to manifest the goodness, kindness in your heart for service of our community. Well, incredible, good words, beautiful words. And I can see that uh, Seva is successful because there are such compassionate people at the leadership. And as you said, you're just one of the thousands who are uh, motivated by the mission, motivated to do good. So really look forward. Uh, hopefully, we don't need to provide services in the world at large for disasters. But uh, certainly, I think there is always going to be a need for interesting services, interesting opportunities. So sevausa.org, is that the right uh, place yes. where people can go and yes. they can learn more. And I like the self program, you know, every one of us needs to get healthier. So uh, whatever uh, way they want to get involved, I think they can do that. Thank you, Arunji, for your time. Really, it was enlightening and look forward to seeing all the beautiful things that unravel in the future for Seva. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you. Thanks for providing us the opportunity.